Okay, so this is Pi News 12.5. I released Pi News 12 uh, earlier on today, and uh, a few of the comments I had were to do with the Pi 400, uh, which looks really interesting. Uh, so, yeah, several people. So thanks to Noel Messi, thanks to Paul Gray, thanks to Daniel Doran. It, uh, it looks really interesting. So if we click on the uh, raspberrypi.org website, so basically it is a keyboard, but it has a Raspberry Pi 4 spec device built into it uh, and the cost is pretty decent as well so it's got 4 gig of RAM it's got an 1800 megahertz processor instead of the 1500 of the Raspberry Pi 4 but it is the same processor it's just clocked a little higher and because the keyboard has a heat sink inside it that allows it to keep cool so it's really interesting and uh, I started having a look you can see here uh, a little cutout in this picture uh, shows you what it looks like so on the back the connectivity is interesting as well so we've got GPIO pins are there we've got an SD card slot we've got uh, micro HDMI we've got a USB-C socket to power it we've got two USB 3 sockets and one USB 2 socket and we've also got an Ethernet socket now the that's three connections for USB instead of the normal four uh, but I guess one of them is doing the keyboard but that does mean that once you plug a mouse in you've lost two of your USB sockets uh, if you're keeping it as neat as possible. So I use a little dongle with my Logitech keyboard and that only takes up one USB socket so I still have three spare. So just, just a little note, um, but it is incredibly neat. Uh, it looks superb. So I thought, oh, I'll have a look at the different retailers selling it. So I had a look at Pi Maroni. This is the keyboard on its own. So uh, there's nothing else with this. The keyboard with the Pi inside, so it's uh, it's a dedicated Pi 400 in there, uh, but it doesn't come with a power supply or anything else. That's the more expensive kit, which is this one. So you get a power supply, you get a mouse, you get a SD card, which I think was a 16 gig SD card and a little beginner's guide. This is brilliant for education. I, I can see why they've done this. Yeah, it is a 16 gig card, you can see there. Uh, so it's very neat. You could plug it into a TV or buy a cheap monitor and you've got really quite a respectable computer um, for quite a sensible price. And obviously I love the Pi. I mean, I, you know, most of my channel is all about the Pi. So I had a look on their site because I was thinking to myself, oh, this is a cheap way of buying a Pi 4 compute module. But I didn't realize that it's not a compute module in there. I just assumed because the compute module has just come out, uh, because it's got Wi-Fi, because it's got 4 gig of RAM, I was thinking this one in the middle here, 4770. Crikey, it's only a little bit more to get the keyboard as well. So I was thinking of ordering one. But as I look through, uh, Jeff Geerling has done a video. Oh, hopefully I'm on mobile data at the moment. I'm I'm uh, I'm in my car. If the audio sounds a bit weird, uh, because I've had to drop my daughter off at swimming. I'm waiting for, her and I figured that this was kind of hot off the press news. Uh, although I'm I'm behind the curve of a lot of YouTubers have been giving them. Uh, so if I go to so Jeff Geerling did a teardown. It looks like the stop, and it is a really good teardown. I wonder if I can increase this quality. It's probably picking it because. Well, it's definitely picking it because I'm sat in my car on mobile data. Let's see if it will jump up to 1080. Be good if it would. Uh, here we are. So the quality is better now. Uh, and you can see all the connections on the back there. Um, but the I just assumed it was a compute module uh, clipped on to a board, uh, like an in and out board uh, that they were talking about before. But it is actually a whole separate board for this device. Now, this is interesting because it does mean that uh, they could certainly convert that to a laptop very easily, but if they're making bespoke boards for different devices, obviously that means the device could be much smaller. So they could make a great handheld device uh, because obviously they, they have all the technology to make it all, uh, all based around a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, but it's kind of what stopped me for getting one. Uh, I mean, I've I've got four or five Raspberry Pi 4s, so I've, I don't need any more Raspberry Pi 4s really, uh, and I already have separate keyboards and things like that. But uh, if you didn't have a device, this is a good way of getting into it. Now, whether there's a little trick missed here in that uh, if this was a modular device, and so it was using the compute module uh, and it was clipped into this board, that would mean that 
when the newer model came out, you'd possibly be able to unclip the device and clip the new one in. And this would be a good sell for education because you imagine you're, you're selling something that maybe you give it a certain shelf life because a Raspberry Pi isn't, isn't a powerful device, but it is perfectly fine for education uh, and office work and all sorts of things that we've had running on Raspberry Pis. Obviously, they wanted to get down to a particular price point, especially for education. So maybe the modular thing could come out in the future, uh, but is it going to be... Uh, too much more money that it's not worth doing but uh, you imagine if you could just unclip your Pi 4 compute module and then in, clip in the new Pi 5 compute module and then you've upgraded your system but you've kept all the other inputs, connections, power supply, keyboard, all things like that uh, haven't changed so you know maybe you could buy a 60-70 pound unit but you get a significant upgrade on what you've got. Anyway I hope you like this, thanks very much for watching, please like and subscribe.